Where'd my head go? Oh, there I Okay, can you see me now? You know, there's the, can you hear me now? It's, can you see me now? Oh, can I stand up straight? Uh, how about, uh, um, okay, anyway, sorry. <laughs> I'm, this is still the uh, aftermath of Vacation Bible School. You know, when we had all those kids last week? Um, so now we are, now we have uh, you, you to celebrate with us today. And so I want to go ahead and share with you some announcements. Howard is, Howard's sharing with Sherry. Um, anyways, look at your bulletin. There's a number of things going on. Um, there's a youth group. I think there's a youth group uh, Santa Cruz trip. Isn't that this Wednesday? Yes. You go online. Uh, there's permission slips on that, so make sure you're taking care of that. Also, we are going to have in mid-August, just to let you know, we're going to have the Kona Ice truck come, which if you weren't here for that before, it was really great. We could go there and uh, it's, you just go ahead and uh, you can choose your flavor. And it's really, it's been really, it was really fun to do that. We've got uh, Litwitz coming up in August. Uh, what else we got? August back to school blessing. Um, so anyway, I think that, you know, that's, that's kind of what's going on. I think we're kind of taking a break for the next week or two of uh, some of the programs after Vacation Bible School, which was wonderful. If you weren't here or you didn't look at the, uh, the highlight reel or something, do that. It just it was great. We had 75, 75 plus kids here. We had uh, 50, 60 volunteers. It was, everything was hopping. It was going really well. We still have some of the aftermath here. Um, we even had snow. So I think that's, there's some pictures of that. So if you, if you didn't come, uh, you missed out. But now today, we are here to worship. We are here to focus our, ourselves on God and what God is doing in our lives and how God walks with us through our ups and our downs, through the dries and the wet spells. And so now let us start to focus our attention on God as we listen to the prelude this morning because God has something special for each and every one of you, including the Polson family who are still at home recovering from COVID. Sorry. See you soon, though. going to continue um, our journey through Genesis, like talking about Jacob. Um, I was thinking about that today in regards to the fact that, you know, in Genesis, of course, uh, the father of our faith, Abraham, 
It goes from like chapter 12 to about chapter 25. But Jacob, um, there's parts of his family and his, his, he's mentioned all the way from like 25 all the way through 50 Genesis. It's, he takes over half of, of uh, Genesis. And uh, it's kind of nice kind of meandering through that, that section and seeing what's going on. Today, he's in the process of getting ready to face off with his brother, Esau. And if you remember what happened uh, before that, he fled from his brother because his brother was threatening his life. And Jacob wasn't all that great to his brother, uh, gaining his, taking his birthright from him and his blessing and so forth. But we're going to look at that and kind of look what he, what he goes through. And, and, uh, but it's, it's, it's kind of a, a tumultuous time for him. Um, you know, he's left Haran, he's on his way to uh, Canaan, um, and, it, and as I look around the world about us, you know, we are even looking at, we're hoping to go up to Pinecrest the first week of August, and Joan was looking at the app this morning, and there's like 160 air quality right now with that smoke up there, and we're not sure what's going to happen. Um, you continue to read the news about various things going on, you know, the economy is still struggling. There's just, you know, gas prices are going down, did you notice that? Yeah. Yeah, 60 cents a gallon less than what I paid for two weeks ago. That's nice. But in all this, our lives are kind of in upheaval a lot of times. But the good news is we'll find out today that God is with us. God doesn't take a vacation. God doesn't take the summer off. God is with us. God is with Jacob. And so I wanted to remind us of that um, as I think about Psalm 103, one of my favorite psalms. You know, there's a lot of psalms, there's 150, and there's a lot of laments in there, but there's also always praises in there. There's a lot more praise psalms than there are laments. And this is what it says here in Psalm 103. Praise the Lord, my soul, all my inmost being, praise his holy name. Praise the Lord, my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgives all your sins and heals all your diseases who redeems your life from the pit and crowns you with love and compassion, who satisfies your desires with good things so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. And towards the end of the psalm, it says, Praise the Lord, you, his angels, you mighty ones who do his bidding, who obey his word. Praise the Lord, all his heavenly hosts, you, his servants, who do his will. Praise the Lord, all his works everywhere in his dominion. Praise the Lord, my soul. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, it's sometimes uh, overwhelming as we go through this life and, and things you know, get in our way and barriers and obstacles and, and, and U-turns and detours. And it just, just sometimes it'd be nice just to have that smooth, straight path to walk on. But that's not what you promised us. Or what you did promise us, that you would be with us. You would walk with us. As we find out with Jacob today, as he prepares to meet his brother, there are some things he needs to face before he even tries to reconcile his brother. And so for some of us, that's true too. And maybe we be reminded today, well, no matter what we have to face, you walk with us. You'll be with us. We may not get all that we wanted, but as we read today, we'll get what we need. In your son's name we pray. And everybody said, Amen. Amazing how God works all these little things out between what you say and what we're doing and just despite our best efforts. <laughs> I love that. Good morning, everybody. Nice to see everyone. Glad you're here. Glad we're all here, our church family. It's great to be with everyone as always. One of the songs, one of the, the one of my favorite lines in the Lord's Prayer that I've only recently realized what it's saying is, um, give us this day our daily bread. And when we say that, um, we're not saying give us this week our daily bread, give us this month our daily bread, give us for the rest of our life our daily bread. God gives us just what we need for right now. And uh, in this one of the songs we're doing this morning, that wonderful, uh, wonderful word, I raise my Ebenezer, which of course we know has nothing to do with Scrooge. Uh, from in First Samuel, um, it says after as, ugh, I'll try again. After Israel's defeat over the Philistines against overwhelming odds, Samuel took a stone and set it up between Mizpah and Shen, and he named it Eben Ha'ezer, which is where we get Ebenezer, which means thus far the Lord has helped us. And I love that. It's just thus far, and God's promise is so faithful in that. So let's stand. 
and sing Psalm 103, basically. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, O oh my soul, worship His holy name. Sing like never before, O oh my soul, I'll worship Your holy name. The
Please take, go ahead and take a seat. Oh, yes. Why do I always forget that? That's the best part. Okay. <laughs> you want to come up and help? Okay. Our, <laughs> the mysterious hooded man. Yes. yes this, mysterious. mysterious is the word. This is the time when we have that wonderful tradition. It goes back, oh, 2,000 or so years of passing the peace of Christ. There's any number of ways you can do it. Uh, you, know the, you know the drill. You can fist bump. That's always a fun one. You can go like this. <laughs> you can, of course, hug if you want. You guys can do that if you want. And any number of things, if you, if you just want to do like this and don't want to, you know, keep distance, of course you can do that. Any way you want to, let's just connect with each other through the peace of Christ. For the kids' message, all kids. Good morning. Do we have any kids here who want to come forward? Okay, we have. I see one coming forward. Good morning. All righty. We. I see other kids. Do you want to come forward and join us? You want to stay there? I may need some adult participation then this morning as well. Do you, want, do you want to turn around so you can see what I've got? Do you want, do you want to turn around? Oh, we're going to do the kids talk backwards. Why don't you turn around? Fondo, I know you can see me. You want to turn around? Oh, you can see yourself on the screen. Do you want to wave for yourself? Okay. Okay, so what do I have here? A gift bag. So I want to talk to you a little bit about presents this morning. But first of all, I want to ask you, if I say the country Canada, um, and can we have our first picture up? If I say Canada, what do you think? Do you guys think of the flag, the maple leaf flag? What, is, what do any of our adults think when I say Canada? You, you think of COVID. Fair enough. Don't spoil my talk, Pastor Andy. Do you think of ice hockey? Oh, maybe. I don't know. I mean, I'm, I'm from England, so, you know, this is a little stereotype. Do we think of maybe um, maple syrup? Maybe the Rocky Mountains? They have some really, really big mountains there. So there's lots of different things you can think of when you think of Canada. And I went to Canada when I was 18, and I brought back some stuff. So I want to show you what I've got, and I think Jerry's got some pictures of some of it. So if we can have our first picture, so that everyone else can see. This is the first thing I brought back. It's a moose. A moose is a Canadian animal, and this is on amethyst crystal. Is that a real Wait, amethyst? This is a real amethyst crystal on here. Thank you. <laughs> Let's see what else did I bring back. If we have our next picture. A little tiny moose. It's a little teddy moose. Size of the palm of my hand. They should. That's mooses are very Canadian. And the next one. This is this isn't a moose. I don't know if anyone knows what this is. It is a ram. It's called a bighorn sheep, and it's one that you'll find in Banff in Canada, where I worked. And this one. 
looks like half dog, half bull. It does kind of a little bit. His name is Timmy, and I bought him back as a present for you and for Mr. Ramsey when I was there. Now, the reason I mention Canada is because we know somebody whose husband really went, recently went to Canada. And when he came back, do you think he bought maple syrup with him? Yeah. Do we think it was like a teddy moose or some crystals? He bought back COVID. What do you think? Good present, bad present? <laughs> bad present. I think you might be right. So possibly, you know, not the best gift. And, you know, if you're watching, Mark, there's some thoughts for next time you go of things you can bring back. Um, but Jesus talked about gifts in the Bible. He said, if your child asks you for a loaf of bread, would you give him a stone or a rock? I'm hoping your parents wouldn't give you that. I think you might be nice have to actually give you bread if you wanted it. He also said, <clears throat> if you ask, your child asks for a fish, would you give them a snake instead? So I have my, my snake here. Probably wouldn't eat this fish. You want to hold the snake? I know you're, we've got a bit of a snake handler here. John, you get the fish as well. There you go. At least for just now. So Jesus said that if even people who kind of screw up sometimes, if they give their children what they want, what they need, what they ask for, how much more will your heavenly father, and who's our heavenly father? Paul New, have you read that one out? Oh, we're just into the snake. So our heavenly father is God. So if people will give us good gifts, how much more does God give us the things that we need? But God doesn't give us always what we want. Sometimes God gives us what we need. And it's not the same thing. Because sometimes we might say, oh, I really, really want three tons of candy. Would that be good for us? Yeah. No. Oh, 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 Honlu, your dentist might not agree with that. So maybe that wouldn't be good. And maybe we want to get revenge on someone who's upset us. And that wouldn't be good either. So God gives us what we need. Sometimes it's what we want. Sometimes it's not what we want. But wherever we go in life and whatever we do, we can be confident that God will give us the things that we need to help us in that time. So, I think we should say a quick prayer before Sunday school. I mean, not strangle ourselves with a snake. <laughs> Let's pray. Dear Lord, thank you that you know all the things that we want and need before, you ask, before we ask you for them. But thank you that you also like to hear us talk to you about what those things are. And help us today and every day to talk to you and tell you the things that we want and the things that we need and help us to trust you that you'll always provide what we need. Amen. All righty. I think at this point, can I have my snake and my fish back? And then you're going to go off to Sunday school with Miss Sue Ann. And I think our middle schoolers can hang out with her if they want to. Good morning. Today's lesson, Bible lessons from Genesis, is this one? 32, 22 to 25. Jacob wrestles with God. That night, Jacob got up and took his two wives, his two female servants, and his 11 sons and crossed the ford of the Jabbok. After he had sent them across the stream, he sent over all of his possessions. So Jacob was left alone and a man wrestled with him till daybreak. When the man saw that he could not overpower him, he touched the socket of Jacob's hip so that his hip was wretched and he, as he wrestled with the man. This is the word of the Lord. Isaiah 41 says, For I am the Lord your God who takes hold of your right hand, who says to you, Do not fear, I will help you. It's very comforting. Let's sing this song. When the best of me is barely breathing, when I'm not somebody I believe in, hold on to me. When I miss the light the night has stolen When I'm slamming all the doors you've opened Hold on to me Hold on to me Hold on to me when it's too dark See you when I am sure I have reached the end. Hold on to me. 
that song I just feel like I just feel like maybe I just want to stand here just you know sit on the lap sit on the lap of God you know one of the things that um, I kind of enjoy doing um, though the neighbors probably don't like it too much but (laughs) sometimes when I get here and you know the wind in Dublin has gone around and it's brought us little gifts all over the sidewalk and the courtyard and stuff like leaves and just kind of all their crunchy and stuff and I like to clear it off I like to blow it away and so I'll turn I'll get that blower going and I'll get it going and I try not to do it before 8 30 <laughs> but um, I haven't heard any complaints yet but you know try to be careful but blow all that up and it just makes that great sound <laughs> off it's like oh silence is so nice I kind of felt like a little bit like that with VBS <laughs> it was great having 75 kids here 50 volunteers all around making noise doing things having fun laughing giggling and then there's that time when down. but we know life is kind of up and down kind of like as I said, takes different turns. We don't expect. Um, we have challenges that come to us. Um, you know, I, I don't know about you, but uh, as I think about, you know, my life and places where I've stuck my neck out um, and it wasn't even sure what I should do. Um, uh, you know, I, I just, I started thinking about roughing soccer a little bit. I didn't do any games this weekend, but I did a game last week. And it was great. It was good. It was fun. It was so far, but I remembered back when I started roughing, which is actually about 30 years ago this year. I was in 92. Um, and I was in Iowa at the time, and our, our kids were there. Our uh, oldest daughter, let's see, 92. Send, she would have been five. Yeah, she was five. And she wanted to play soccer. She wanted to play soccer. So, you know, we signed up for soccer. We went to the first game and we got there and the kids gathered around and there's all these five and six year olds around. And, and of course, you know how, I don't know if you've watched those kids, how they play games. 
Yeah, it's kind of like it's kind of like watching rugby in a way because there's a scrum that kind of moves around the ball. It's all over the place. But periodically the ball goes out of bounds or somebody trips somebody and they know they didn't mean to, but still you have to you know call a foul. And I remember um, I think like the second or third game there, um, there was no referee. There was no referee out there. And you know they people didn't know what to do. What are we going to do? And so he says, okay, I'll do it. I don't know the rules, <laughs> but I'll do it. I'll go out there and I'll try and help keep this chaos somewhat in a collective control. Um, and so I did that. And you know, a couple times the ball went out and I turned to the, to, the, to the parents. That time parents were very, at that age, they're very accommodating. And, and I said, okay, so who gets the ball? That team. Okay, thank you. Okay, here's the ball. Do it. Um, kind of stuck my neck out. I didn't know what I was doing, but uh, that started me on the trajectory where um, about uh, a couple years later, I got certified. Um, after that, I became, I got certified to be an instructor. Um, I got certified to do high school matches, which I did uh, in 98. I did for uh, 10 years when I was in Iowa, went up the ladder, because in Iowa, as a high school referee, you get a patch based on um, your score when you took the test, upon your number of years experience, how many times you've been to tournaments, um, your participation in your local club and things like that. And so I kind of went up the ladder, got the, the, the highest level patch um, that you can have. And then I also um, uh, refereed college for a while. For three years, uh, I refereed college. And it just, it, as I thought about it, I thought that would have never happened if I wasn't willing to step out on that field when I didn't know what the heck I was doing. And it's just, it just, it made me kind of think about life. Um, it, it made me think about, you know, Jacob's situation. And I thought about the, the story and, and, and reading about it and so forth. You know, when he left Canaan to go to Haran, where his mother sent him to, you know, supposedly to find a wife, she said when he left, I'll let you know when it's all clear for you to come home. Because remember, he had deceived his brother, he deceived his father. And though his father didn't seem to uh, have a lot of animosity, his brother was very <laughs> upset. He says, I'm going to kill him. Basically what he said, when dad dies, you're going down. And so his mom says, okay, you know, you go up there, don't worry about it. I'll let you know when the coast is clear. Well, he's been up there 20 years. We talked about that, 20 years, working 14 years for two wives, six years for his wages and flocks and, and uh, possessions. And he, he's never heard from them. We don't hear record that he's ever heard from anybody. I mean, they didn't have Pony Express back then, besides the mail, but they had Camel Express. I mean, come on. But he never heard from them, and he decides it's time to go back. And actually, he decided, if you remember, because God says it's time for you to go back home. It's time for you to go back to the land which I gave your father and your father's father and for you to now be in charge. And smart man, he consulted with his wives, both of them. And they said, yeah, I think that's a good idea. And so he headed back. Squirrel! I never get distracted. Um, so he headed back. He didn't know how clear it was. Well, two weeks ago, we talked about, before VBS, we talked about the fact that he wanted to go ahead and see what he could do to reconcile with his brother. And what he did is he began by um, sending him flocks of <laughs> camels and donkeys and goats and sheep and, and rams and just, just seeing if somehow he could go ahead and get, send him gifts to help let him know that he's coming back in a sign of peace. And if we remember what we read, it said that um, Esau, he sent out scouts, and the scouts came back and says, yeah, your brother, he knows you're coming. He's going to come halfway. He's coming to meet you too, along with 400 men. So I don't know how you would feel, but, you know, Jacob hears that, and I think he's thinking, I don't know if this is such a good idea. Maybe I should go back to Haran. Maybe I should go someplace else. Maybe I don't know if I should go back. But he doesn't. He's about to come face to face with Esau. He's decided now he has to face what drove him away, what caused him the, the, the need to run away. But he's become more responsible. 
remember what he does. One of the things he does is he goes ahead and he divides, he divides his people into two groups because he says, if one of them gets routed by Esau, the other one will be able to escape. He also says that he decides that he's going to go ahead and he's, he, he's, he's, at, he's near a river called the Jabok or Yabok. And he first sends his, at night, he sends his wives, his female servants, his 11 sons, and all his possessions across the river. And what's interesting, he sends them across the river, and then he goes back where he come from. And it actually is a reoccurring theme, what's going to happen. What's going to happen when he goes back across the river? So I want to show you just a picture of the Jabbok. Um, Jerry had... Got up here. here so here's a, uh, always, so here's the, I know this works. Isn't it? Jerry Wise. There it is. Oh, there it is. Awesome. Okay, so here's Israel. Here's what you got, Israel. And you have Sea of Galilee and you have the Dead Sea. And you can see right here, River Jabbok. It's the largest tributary that comes into the Jordan River. So he's coming down from Haran, which is up here, and he's coming down here. He's going to end down in this area. And he comes to this big river. Okay, so the next one, Jerry. So this is, uh, so I want you to see, this is a graphic and it shows, see, these are all mountains here. This is a plain, this is a Jordan plain. And here's mountains along here. Here's the coastal line. And here again is Jabbok River. I mean, it, yeah, it goes between Galilee and Dead Sea. And then one more. This is what it looks like. Isn't it beautiful? Kind of nice. He's got a, so he has to send them across. Now, we have to remember that there were not bridges back then. There was no ferries. Um, so the way they got across was stepping stones, or they would lay timber in the shallowest and narrowest part of the passage. But they, had to, they crossed at night. And the only time you're going to cross that at night, when you can hardly see where you're going, you're stepping on stones, you're stepping on timber, is when there's a sense of urgency. And so for some reason, he feels it's urgent that his family gets across that river. And then he goes back. He wants to go home. He wants to reconcile with his family. He's fearful of his brother, but he longs to see the face of his brother. But he goes back across the river, and it says he goes back there, and he wrestles with a man who's there. Now, as I thought about this wrestling, I thought about, you know, this is a theme that kind of covers Jacob's life. You remember? Even, even back when, um, in chapter 25, when it talks about, um, you know, Rebecca has not been, um, has been barren, and then uh, Isaac prays, no, wait, is it, yeah, prays, and then she has, she's having twins, okay? But what's happening it says there's a jostling or wrestling in her womb. Already, there's this going on. And so there's this sparring or this fighting that continues to follow Jacob throughout his life. If you remember um, when he went up to Haran, you know, well, actually, he sparred first with his father for the blessing, sparred with his brother for the birthright, and then he went up to Haran, and he's sparring with Laban for his wives, he's sparring with him for his wages. There's this constant fighting, uh, uh, struggling, though he becomes more mature and he, he realizes that I think that sometimes um, you can't just use deception. You, you shouldn't use deception. So he's sparring with him. And so he comes to this person who it says, and it's interesting it, now, so the scripture is not always consistent. If you read the account of Hosea, who recounts this back in chapter 12, the prophet, he talks about how Jacob was wrestling with an angel. When we first read it, he's wrestling with a man. And later, when we get to the end of it, Jacob says he wrestled with God. So whatever it is, whether it's a man, an angel, or God, we don't know for sure what happened there, but we do know he was wrestling perhaps with himself about whether he should cross that river or not whether he should come face to face with his brother or not, whether he was up to that challenge. And yet all through his life, all through his life, one thing that has continued over and over again is the tenacity, the tenacity of Jacob. He, he 
he went ahead and he went up to he went up to to Haran, you know, 500 miles away. Really didn't have didn't have a, a, a no no exactly where to go. He went up there. He he worked for seven years for his first wife. Worked seven years for his second wife. Worked six years for his wages. The tenacity is part of who Jacob is, just as wrestling is part of who he is. He stuck his neck out. And the tenacity helped carry him through. But it wasn't just his tenacity that carried him through. Because there's another theme that we follow through Jacob's journey. So when Jacob left Cana, when he left and he's on his way to Haran, where does he stop? He stops at a place that later be called, is called Bethel, house of God. And it's there that he has a dream and he sees angels. And it said God was with him. God came beside him. And he says, I'll be with you. And he gives him the promise that he would be the one in charge. He would be the one who would have the land. And so he goes on up to Haran. Now, when he decides to come back from Haran, also in this, this first part of this chapter, it says that he came to a camp of angels. Two angels again are there. And God is with him. And now he comes down to the point of wrestling. It says that God is with him. God is with him from every, from every place that he starts up to Haran and come back down. Part of his personality is wrestling. Part of it is sparring. It's, it's not easy to live in that country at that time. You have to be on your toes. You have to be ready. But also he wasn't doing it alone. So in this wrestling match that continues on and on, it said, and Cindy read it, that he was not, that the man was not able to overcome Jacob. That was not, that didn't happen. And so he says, Jacob, let me go, let me go. And Jacob says, no, I won't let you go. And even this person, this person or God or angel touches his hip and dislocates it. Or at least causes him to have a limp. And he continues to hold him. And Jacob continues to say, what I want to know I want to receive a blessing, and I want to know your name. That's what he wanted. He continues with that wrestling. He continues to ask for this. What we find out then is this angel man, God, says, I'm going to give you a new name. No longer will you be called deceiver, supplanter. No longer will you be called the, the, the one who we have to watch out for. You will be called wrestler. The one who wrestles with God. The one who wrestles through life. The one who's willing to stick his neck out. The one that has, is tenacious enough to continue on. Tenacious. Why? I think because God was with him. You see, it's one thing to be tenacious. It's one thing to stick out your neck like he did. But it's another thing to know that God is by your side. God is watching over you. God is over you. But the other theme that's unspoken I see in this passage is courage. Jacob had courage. He was not dissuaded from what he sought. From the wives. From the, the possessions and the flocks. From going back. He was willing to go back across to Jacob by himself on that side of the river to wrestle, first of all, with himself and then I think with God as to what he does next, because he had that courage. He had that sense that God was with him, and it gave him that courage. Being faithful is not easy. I think many of us could, could mention that, <laughs> could say that. We've all had we all have a story. We have a story of at least one or two or three, maybe four times, where we've thought about throwing in the towel. I know I did that with refing. More than once, I was ready to say, hey, I'm done. Jones heard it more than once. <laughs> I'm tired of those belligerent parents. I'm tired of those coaches. I'm tired of having the players yell at me. But I stuck with it. I continued on with it. I didn't do it perfectly, but I continued on. And I think because I realized that that is part of who I am. That's, that's, that's a part of who I, I long to be, someone who's out there willing to be in the midst of the fray and willing to help have the game somewhat under control. 
But I couldn't do it without God. I couldn't do it if I didn't have someone beside me encouraging me, keeping me going. And I think that's the story for us today, is we hear about Jacob, not because he is so tenacious, not because he is so courageous, but because even all the things he went through, he had God by his side. God was there for him, and God is here for us. We don't need to wrestle with God to gain his favor, but to do what God calls us to do, who God calls us to be, we do need courage. We do need courage. And we need to know, again, be reminded that we have a community of faith here that is here to encourage you, to give you strength, to watch over you, to lift you up. We may not get all we want. We've talked about that more than once today. But I do believe we'll get what we need. God is here for us. He may not cure us from our diseases, but he does bring us healing. And he'll bring us wholeness. He'll bring us shalom. He'll bring us peace. God is with us. And nobody can take that from us. Please pray with me. Lord Jesus, just in the song we had, Hold On To Me Today, just a reminder that the difficult times do come, the hard times come, um, and it's hard to be tenacious at moments. But Lord, you walk with us, you follow us, you're there for us. So Lord, help us again to be reminded that you do give us what we need. It may not come at the exact time we want, but as Steve even mentioned, when we pray for the Say the Lord's Prayer, we talk for the daily bread. We talk about the daily bread, not the weekly bread, not the monthly bread, not the annual bread, but the bread that comes to us daily. And as we wrestle with decisions, Lord, help us to be willing to stick our neck out. Help us to be willing to be courageous like Jacob and hold on to that promise that you are walking with us through those times. You are the great God, and if you are for us, who can be against us? Amen. The story of Jacob always reminds me of a corollary of Moses when he received the Ten Commandments and he was told to go back to uh, the Israelites in Egypt and give this to them. And uh, he said, who, shall I, who should I say sent me? And God said, this is in Hebrew, Echye asher echye, I am who I am, which for me just implies just how great and powerful and mighty God is. And um, of course he'll always be with us because he's God and we're not. And that's kind of what this song is. I want to be close, close to your side. Heaven is real, death is alive. On you hear voices, angels above, singing as one. Hallelujah, holy, holy, God Almighty, the great I am. None be 
beside thee, God Almighty, the great I am, great I am. The mountains shake before you, the demons run and flee. Before the power and the presence of the great I am, 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 the great I am. Hallelujah. God Almighty, the great I am, hallelujah, holy, holy, God Almighty, the great I am, who is worthy, none beside thee, God Almighty. That's so why we have time of prayer. Remind us who is the great I am. It's not us. It's someone who is there for us, knows what we need, and to share with our community of faith those joys or concerns we have that we can lift up with you, we can walk with you during this time. So if you have a concern that you'd like to share or a joy, um, I ask you to go ahead and Raise your hand and we'll go ahead and bring the microphone to you and uh, share it with us. Hello. <clears throat> Is this on? Yeah. Joe, uh, I'd like prayer for my daughter, Eowyn. She's really going through a very difficult personal and time having to do with our family and her situation and her relationship to Christ. So please pray. Bet. Thanks, Joe. Go ahead. You guys are too nice to each other. I don't know. <laughs> Who's going to talk first? Okay. Hi, Good I'm job. Wait a side. I'm Sue King Irwin. I just want to say I'm, I have a blessing that my daughter Christy is here with me from Vancouver, Washington, and her two boys, my grandsons, are in um, are here tonight today too. Just want to introduce them. Great. Thank you. Uh, Stan Houston uh, asked for prayers for Pete uh, Prestigard. Uh, he was in rehab and then uh, took a turn for the worst and went to uh, Valley Care, and uh, he's doing much better there. So uh, praises Good. for that. Good. Good. Good to know. Thanks. Hi, Tina Kritzer. Um, I have a prayer request actually for Sue Wilburn. Um, she and Jeff had to bolt out of here really quick. Um, her dad is going into the emergency room. Um, both her parents right now are struggling. Her mom just got home from the emergency room. Um, so both of her parents really just are not doing well uh, health-wise. So um, between Sue and her sister Karen and Jeff, they're trying to manage all this. So prayers for the family um, and, of course, prayers for her folks. Thanks, Tina. Thanks for letting us know.
Anybody else here? <clears throat> I, do, I do just want to mention our daughter-in-law, Jessica. Um, you know, she's doing much better. She's improving every day. Um, um, she's uh, you know, cooking and she's, she's an Ikea fanatic. <laughs> they, they like to put things together. Um, and with Ikea, usually it goes together pretty well. <laughs> but you do need to take the time. You need to be tenacious getting all those screws. I mean, 150 pieces, you know. Um, anyway, so, but she's going to thank you for her, your prayers for them. And, you know, they've made the move and they're making the transition. Uh, and it, I think it's going, it's going really well. But we ask, continue to pray. Appreciate that very much. So, okay, well, let's go ahead and pray for these. And uh, let's... Uh, We'll close with the Lord's Prayer together. I already come to you this morning uh, being reminded that you meet us wherever we're at, whether in the mountaintop of joy or the valley of concern. Um, you're there with us. You walk with us. Um, we do pray for <clears throat> Pete Prestigard. So glad that he's able to move back to Valley Care, though it was due to not very good circumstances, but pray you'll give him um, a sense of your grace and peace, be with his family um, as he's had his care, continue to watch over him uh, as he goes through this transition um, and just just continue to bring him, or bring him health, um, bring him a sense of your grace and your peace. We thank you that um, family can come visit, that Christy's here with the boys and that Sue can uh, have them around and be able to celebrate with them. So glad that that's happening. We do pray for Erwin, for Joe's daughter, and Joe and Val's daughter, as she goes through a difficult time, um, and help her to uh, uh, know that you're there, available for her, and thank you for Joe and Val and their consistent um, desire to, to help her understand what it is to, to be a follower in faith. And we pray for the Jeff and Sue as they deal with Sue's parents. Um, I know uh, she had to spend time with her mom for in ER and now her dad as well. Oh, it's so hard um, watching our parents uh, having health concerns. I just ask you to give them strength um, and wisdom, um, compassion, um, and people to come alongside, uh, the caregivers to be there available for them. Uh, and Lord, I, I also am so grateful that um, we have a community of faith here that we are able to again have our vacation Bible school and um, that Mark's gift to the family from Canada didn't happen until after VBS and I just pray you bring him back to health and their whole family and for those others here that are dealing with uh, dealing with COVID or other concerns they have and Lord we we also uh, give you praise for our family of faith here for those that we get to see we haven't seen in a while or for those that have special events in their lives um, that that, they, uh, that has brought them a sense of joy in your grace. Um, thank you, Lord, for those times that we get to celebrate. Uh, we get to uh, uh, just reconnect with, uh, with uh, longtime friends or with, with people that we have uh, so long to be with. And now, Lord, we come to you as your followers, seeking to be courageous, seeking to be tenacious, seeking to be faithful. And we say that prayer which you taught your disciples that begins, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not in temptation, but deliver us from evil. Thine is the kingdom and the power and a glory forever. Amen. Amen. Well, I'm so grateful that we can be together as a church family and lift each other up through all of these crises as well as good times, of course. And uh, when I, I was away all week and teaching in a music camp, that was a great blessing. But I'm always aware of my church family and always think of all of you when I'm away and uh, just know that we're here for each other. And... Uh, I read a scripture from Isaiah earlier that where it said, God holds us by our right hand. That's an interesting metaphor. I'm left-handed, but that doesn't matter. I know God's there, and he never lets go, and that's the point. He's always there with us. 
We always hear Psalm 23. It's the most familiar psalm in the world. And different translation says, Even when I walk through the darkest valley, I won't be afraid. For you are close beside me. Your rod and your staff protect and comfort me. So let's stand and sing Psalm 23. Because that's what it is. Have courage, hold on to that which is good. Return no one evil for evil. Strengthen the faint hearted, support the weak, help the suffering, honor all people. Love and serve the Lord while rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen.
Good.